these conferences because everyone talks about your credentials because um, obviously everyone needs to know you know how you've been educated and where you work and what your title is but really who am I is I'm someone who firstly English is not my first language I'm an immigrant into this country and uh, I come from Spanish parents so those that know me like Jason very well will often know I say things and he just looks at me to go do you mean this yes I do so I apologize for that because I often actually get my words muddled up and I also talk in female and male perspective often so just apologize for that I'm also a stepmother to two children a 14 year old and an 11 year old one's a little monster the other one's actually fabulous um, so that's who I am but the love of my life is my dog and that's Charlie that you see up there um, and she is an absolute beautiful beast and she's she's absolutely the love of my life so that's kind of a little bit about who I am outside of my credentials of why I'm talking to you here today so what is design thinking I'll let me work this one out Okay, so design thinking really, it is, it is a terminology, but it was pretty much put on the planet by Stanford University. They pretty much uh, designed a way that they thought that people could think and problem solve quite differently. And what they thought is that they could infuse approaches that are, critic, that are uh, uh, creative and also analytical. Um, and basically they went, it's design thinking. They literally have a university that runs courses and you can actually get a degree in design thinking. I've had an opportunity to do a, a Stanford University design course, design thinking executive course, which was pretty amazing to actually be involved in. Um, but literally that's kind of where the term um, sort of started. So what is design thinking? So really when I think about what it actually is, it's, it's very much about human. It's very human um, centered. It's all about empathy. So it's really, for me, design thinking is the study of people. It's how you actually uh, look at the way people interact with your products and services. Observe the way they interact um, when they enter your store or, or use your website or whatever it may be. It's that observation piece that you actually take to design or problem solve. It's experimental, so it's about actually going out with a very early type prototype testing it with the market, testing it with your customers, and then going back and through that observation that you've experienced, that people have experienced, actually make the changes required to really go out with a proper product out there in the marketplace. Absolutely about uh, collaborating, but it's more about diversity. It's bringing different thinking to um, solve your problem or to come up with ideas. So having a diverse group of people working on actually the problem solving, you're actually going to get a much different thinking and a much different outcome than if you have people that all think along the same lines. So diversity is key to design thinking. It's optimistic. And what I mean by that is that it always looks at the possibilities. It always looks at what can be and what can happen, as opposed to looking at what are the risks involved in actually going down this, this route. It just removes any risks and looks at what the possibilities actually are. And it always looks for the emotional um, side of things. So I was speaking to one of my engineers at work and I work with a lot of engineers so emotion is not something that they actually talk about all the time and he said something to me which I thought was beautiful and he said I get this emotional talk that you're talking about every time I design a bridge or build a bridge I leave a piece of myself in that bridge mm -hmm. and that's the emotion side and even though he's building a bridge that is made of concrete mm -hmm. But yet he leaves a little bit of himself in every bridge that he actually designs and that's bringing that emotional side of things. So I'm not going to go through all of these but there are some principles around thinking like a designer and that's really about the attitude and the mindset you bring and when someone asks me what really design thinking is all about there's a methodology, there are tools, there are processes that we apply to, to, to go through the um, brainstorming session, to go through um, coming up with the idea, divergent, convergent thinking. But at the end of the day, what it's all about is the mindset you bring to problem solve. The mindset you bring to define what the problem is and actually come up with the ideas to be able to try and solve those problems towards the end. But some of the key elements to that is that you bring a beginner's mindset. And that's that you look at the idea with a fresh perspective. You don't bring the baggage from perhaps you've had from other ideas or similar ideas or your expertise. You bring your experience and your observations, but you look at it from if you're starting all over again. Not from, oh, I've already done this before. I know what works and what doesn't work. And so we can't try that because we've done that already. You've got to bring a beginner's mindset. You've got to be curious. So you've got to look at the world around you and you've got to take from your experiences and bring them to the actual table and share those experiences with the people that you're working with and say, 
I'm curious about how that actually works. So I've experienced this outside there, or I've seen this company do this, or I experienced this last week. It's actually having a curious mindset where you actually, you know, if you go somewhere, you will be that person that actually pokes that button because it, you're curious to see what actually happens. So it's bringing that curiosity um, to the table when you're working. The other thing you've got to do is you've got to let go of your ego. And I experience that in my work environment quite often because I have a lot of people that I work with which are very, very experienced and very subject matter experts in what they actually do. They're paid because they're an, they're an actual expert in what they do. What comes with that, unfortunately, is that there's a big ego that comes with that. And talking about meetings, they think that they, they have the right to speak over other people because they're more experienced or because they're the experts and their point of view is the only one that's valid. Um, not a graduate by way of example. So it's actually been able to put your ego aside and actually take everybody else's perspective on board to, to then start to develop your own ideas. So there are other um, elements of it and you can certainly see these up on the board and we haven't got time to explore all of those today. Okay, so why do they say it works? And this is contentious. Some people say this is rubbish. Some people say that it, that, that, that it is actually the way that it operates. But design thinking uses both left and right side of your brain. Your left side of the brain is what they call your structured side of the brain. So it's, the, it's what you would go and do and if you're trying to sort of define something. So you've got an idea and you need to look at the risk. You need to look at um, how it's actually going to operate. So, so you actually will use a structured approach and an analytical approach to actually um, look at that particular idea. Most people that work in a business environment, engineers, project managers, accountants and all those sorts of people, live most of the side on the left side of the brain because their jobs are structured and the tasks that they actually do, they have to actually be quite structured in the way they actually go about every day. Then you've got your right side of the brain and your right side of the brain is more your creative and intuitive side of the brain. It's your emotional side of the brain. So what it uses is, is synthesis to actually um, make, to sort of make sense of what's going on. A lot of artists, poets, people like that sit on, the, sit on that side of the, the brain. What design thinking tries to do with the tools and techniques that it applies is that it actually tries to use both sides of the brains. And it tries to make you be able to fluidly go between both sides of the brain as the activity requires you to do it. And that essentially is why they say design thinking actually works. Now that can come quite natural to people and some people actually need to physically do some exercises using different sides of the brain to be able to actually um, run through this. And Roxy sat in some of my workshops at work where we actually facilitate some of these tools and techniques around it. And it actually works, doesn't it, Roxy? Absolutely. So, um, so I'm not going to go into this, but basically design thinking is all around defining the problem instead of actually coming up with a solution. And I see this constantly. People jump into solution mode straight away without actually knowing what the real problem is. And I see that on a daily basis at work. Um, so it's really actually having a deep understanding and of what the actual problem is. So really deep diving into that and going that from an empathetic point of view, as opposed to jumping straight into solution mode. Um, these are some examples of uh, what we've done with clients, where clients have come with us with a challenge or with a problem, that this is our problem. And when we've actually defined what the problem is, it's actually quite different. Um, and therefore, obviously, your design is quite different. So, to finalise, so I do believe that design thinking has tools, has techniques, there's a framework, there's a methodology, but at the end of the day, it is a mindset that you bring to problem solve. It must be in, uh, in deep empathy, it must be grounded in deep empathy, it's an understanding of how people interact, or how people experience your product, your service, whatever it is you're delivering. You've always got to put yourself in someone else's shoes. And that's about having some reflection. It's about having some perspective. It's about having some insight about yourself and also what other people are doing. Focus on defining the problem and not actually solving the problem. And you will get a much better outcome. And prototyping, as I've already said, and what is design thinking about? It's basically about designing for people and designing ideas and designing um, solutions that are all about the people. Um, and that's it. So, so thank you very much.